Welcome to Poems You Need, where two poets share the poems that sustain and inspire us. Hi, I'm Kelly Russell Agadon. And I'm Melissa Studdard. And today we're reading poems by Major Jackson. And I chose this poem because I found it very life affirming, and it's the poem that I need right now. And there's one line in here that is um, my absolute favorite, if you want to listen for it and maybe guess what it is. The poem is called, Let Me Begin Again. Let me begin again as a quiet thought in the shape of a shell slowly examined by a brown child on a beach at dawn, straining to see their future. Let me begin this time knowing the drumming in my dreams is me inheriting the earth, is morning lighting up the rivers. Let me burn my vanities, old music in the pines, sifters of scotch, a day moon like a signature of night. This time... Let me circle the island of my fears only once, then live like a raging waterfall and grow a magnificent mustache. Let me not ever be the birdcage or the serrated blade or the empty season. Dear glacier, dear sea of stars, dear leopards disintegrating at the outer limits of our greed. Soon we will encounter you only in motivational tweets. Reader, I should have married you sooner. This time, let me not sleep like the prophet who believes he's seen infinity. Let me run at breakneck speeds towards sceneries of doubt. I have no more dress rehearsals to attend. Look closer. I am licking my lips. You really got me with trying to guess which line was your favorite, because there are so many favorite lines of mine in this poem. And every time I read it, I discover something new. And I was thinking, I was trying to pay attention to your face and like the (laughs) notice where you seemed particularly delighted. And I noticed you were very delighted at Grow a Magnificent Mustache. And also, reader, I should have married you sooner. Did I guess? That's it. That's the line I love. I reader, love I should that. have married you sooner. Yeah, I love that line too. We're just invited into the poem. There, I mean, the poem is like you said. It's got all these. You, I smile when when I read it. I'm sure I smile that magnificent mustache because it's got that those sounds in it. Yes, yes, and just the idea. I mean, I can picture this mustache too. It's a wonderful image. And the imagery at the beginning of the poem, I am, I've read it like 10 times and I never get over it. The, the begin as a quiet thought in the shape of a shell, slowly examined by a brown child. It's beautiful. And it's such a great extended metaphor. It is. And, um, you know, people watching it don't have the poem in front of them, but the line breaks. I, I really tried to honor them. Um, because they create they create different meanings. So you read the line and then you drop and you get a little surprise right below it. So I really appreciated the line breaks in this poem. Mm, wonderful. Yes. Um, gosh, what a what a beautiful poem. It's hard to <laughs> move from it. Uh just go to anything else. Um, but I also have a wonderful poem I want to share. So uh, we will move along. Um, And the poem that I'm reading is called Ode to Everything, and it was in the Northwest Review, and it's also in his new book, uh, Razzle Dazzle, which is his new and selected poems, and one of the best book titles around, I think. (laughs) Um, And so, you know, as you can imagine with a title like Ode to Everything, this is like an abundantly generous poem and it has abundantly uh, delicious imagery and sonic play and um, just all kinds of beautiful things going on. And um, one of the things that really strikes me about it is the way it calls attention to all these small and passing moments that as humans we tend to take for granted 
Um, but here he reminds us, no, these are glorious moments. These are the bits of this beautiful shimmering whole. And um, even the things that may not seem so great when they're happening. So I'll go ahead and share that. Ode to Everything. Somehow, I have never thought to thank the ice cream cone for building a paradise in my mouth. And can you believe I have never thought to thank the purple trout lily for demonstrating its six-petal dive, or the yellow circle in a traffic light for illustrating patience? My bad. In my life, I have failed to praise the postman whose loyalty is epic the laundress who treasures my skinny jeans and other garments, and the auto repairman who clings a wrench inside my car, tightening her own music. Were my name called and I were summoned on a brightly lit stage to accept a little statuette, after staring in utter disbelief, I would thank my dentist, as well as my neighbor, who sits vigil beside the dying far away from the lights, and my fourth grade teacher who brought down three taped rulers on my hands as punishment for daydreaming out a window during an exam I already completed. Mea culpa. Now that I know the value of the peaks across from Flanders Hill, I will also perennially express reverence for their green crowns. I will never fail again to say small devotions for the scar on a friend's face that lengthens when I walk into a room. That is such a beautiful poem. And these poems pair so perfectly together um, because they are so rich with the metaphor and the um, imagery. The ice cream cone, like to start off with the ice cream cone. Um, and and you're right. These are things that you don't really think about, and you're and some of them which seem you know getting hit on the hands for daydreaming, um, you know which seem to be like a bad thing, but to also give thanks because like what they make us. Um, but I also love the detail that he was daydreaming, um, and the speaker was daydreaming and looking out the window, and the test was already done, so it was the teacher's mistake, and to have that grace for the teacher. Right. Um, and, and the one thing I, I really loved was the my bad in the poem, um, because Major did a, a thing in the other poem where he had like motivational tweets. And so I, I just think it's a really, um, the language, it's the language of today. Yes. Yes, you're so right. I, I love that. It feels so contemporary at the same time as feeling really timeless, too. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, and the, the one that you pointed out with the teacher, um, you know, slapping the hand and then him saying mea culpa afterwards, it, the, I had to read that twice because at first I was like, wait a minute, it's not your fault. It's the teacher's fault. And then I realized he was, a, the apology is for not acknowledging the grace in that moment, not for having done something wrong. I thought, oh, what a beautiful, complicated layering. Um, at that moment. And then another thing that got me in the same way was the scar on a friend's face that lengthens when he walks into a room because I was like, is that literally a scar or is he talking about the smile as a scar that lengthens? And I just thought, how beautiful is that? You know? That's wonderful. Yeah. I think, you know, talking about his metaphors is a really interesting thing to me because I don't know if you ever read this book by Robert Bly called Leaping Poetry, and he talks about the difference between poetry that leaps from image to image, and then poetry that he calls poems of a single light, where they, they stay on this extended metaphor. And the thing that I really love about Major's work is it's both, you know, it's really both. He is equally skilled and gifted at leaping from one metaphor to another, um, as much as he is at just taking this one great metaphor and just yeah. drawing everything, you know, out of it that could possibly come out of it. So, yeah, these are two beautiful poems. Um, I mean, we need an ode to everything. I do. I definitely, this is definitely a poem I need. So thanks for sharing it. Uh, yes. And I thought when I read it, my first thought was, 
everyone should write an ode to everything. I was thinking that too. It'd be a really good writing prompt. And it would. It would include after Major Jackson under your title. <laughs> yes, that's so important. We were just talking about that in one of my classes recently, that when you write in, in sort of an imitation poem or a poem that comes after someone else, um, it's kind of like the little dedication under the title where you say after so-and-so. Yeah, thank you right. for bringing that up. So important. Yeah, such a thoughtful uh, and, and important thing to do. And then it can also invite readers. If you see an after, then you get to go down and track down the original poem. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone wins. Yes. <laughs> I love tracking down the original poem. So. Yeah. That's okay. Well, thank you, Kelly. And thank you, Major. <laughs> you. Thank you, Major. Thanks, Mel. <laughs> thank you for celebrating poetry with us today. Information about the poet and works featured can be found on the episode page. And if you enjoyed today's reading, please press the like button and subscribe so not to miss another poem. You can also share the episode with a friend, and we hope you do. Until next time, we wish you beauty, inspiration, and very meaningful days. May you always have the poems you need.